What's going on, wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to react to a video from my guy, Kicking It With Leo. And he's going to predict every wrestling match for WrestleMania 41 months in advance, bro. This is the early edition. Now, shout out to people like him and like Wolf and all these other people who can have the foresight to think about something that far in advance. But for me... I don't have that gift, okay? I don't have any foresight and I have terrible memory, so I'm always living in the moment and that's not by choice, okay? But without further ado, let's see what he has to say here. Before we get started, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button here, go to his channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. We're trying to get this man up to 500 subscribers. That's what we do as a wrestling family, so let's support each other. Now, without further ado, let's get into this. Let's get into this. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's good YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video and you guys have been showing a lot of love on my recent prediction videos talking about predicting bad blood even though it's weeks in advance. Well, I'm going to take it a step further and predict WrestleMania 41 months in advance. You heard it. Yeah. And I'm going to repeat it again. WrestleMania 41 is months away at this point and I'm going to try yep. to predict the matches on the card and then as we get closer to wrestlemania 41 we're gonna do our, a follow-up video um and see how well i did go looking back at the predictions that i had and we'll see how accurate or how off i was completely being but hey, i like it. he owning up to it for this video this video idea so um we're gonna get into it i have a lot of them on my phone so if you guys see me looking down that's why it's because i did take a lot of the matches that i'm gonna think that's predicting that's gonna happen on my phone so that if you see me looking down that's why so the first match that i'm predicting will happen is a match okay. i feel like will happen i feel like this is probably one of the few that i feel like that will be accurate come wrestling 41 and that being jay cargill versus bianca Ooh, Belair. i like that we one know they're currently that gotta happen champions, but we know we know wwe is going to want to pull the trigger mm -hmm. on having those two face each other at wrestlemania and i feel like it's inevitable that and according to, to uh, articles of course triple h will want this you know he loved that black on black violence okay no i'm just playing i'm just i'm just playing i don't believe that i don't believe triple h's Races is is just a joke guys okay relax okay at some point they're going to lose their tag team titles probably at the royal rumble or somewhere down the line in the road in the lead up to wrestlemania 41 and we will have them finally have their match at wrestlemania 41 next year mm -hmm. but my personal prediction is when it comes down to who's going to turn heel on who it's the interesting part people a lot of people are going to say bianca well, not Bianca, but Jay Cargill is the one that's going to turn. No, 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 no. I think Bianca Belair will turn heel because if we, if, if for us wrestling fans that are familiar with Bianca Belair, her NXT run when she was being a heel was some of her best work. And I feel like they should have kind of capitalized that and brought that up to the main roster because mm. it would have been a great way to have her slotted in, especially with the landscape that we had at the time. Even currently right now, a heel bianca belair going up against this new face of rhea ripley i will be totally invested in that match that, because the promos that they can have the matches they're gonna have is going to be top tier so this could be so good because you know what for one the only thing about bianca Belair turning heel and jay turning face i'm not so sure how jay cargill can be I guess more of a convincing baby face, but you know what? There's been people we've doubted and they've actually turned out and superseded our doubts. Look at, you know, some people who hated Jay Uso. Look at Dominic Mysterio. We didn't know they were going to end up that way. So maybe Jay Cargill may come in and kill this. And a match between Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley, both women who are super strong in the ring. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is that that would be fantastic. But, but continue. But I, how would they do that? Because then they'll have to do a superstar shakeup or some type of draft in order for it to happen. I don't know. We're a rumble. There's so many different things. Money in the bank. There's different ways you can do this. But um, yeah, let's see what happens. I have to have Bianca be the one to turn heel on Jay Cargo. Because I think everybody thinks Jay Cargo turning. It seems like almost a certainty and people are just predicting that for, for so long. So I think why not have a swerve and shock the fans and have Bianca be the one to do it. But the first yeah. match that I predict is going to happen at WrestleMania 41, Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargill. The okay. next match that I'm predicting is going to be for the Intercontinental Championship. We have the 
Intercontinental Champion Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker going in as Intercontinental Champion um, at WrestleMania 41 to face the face that runs the place, the 16-time World Heavyweight Champion. You can't see him, John Cena. I have John Cena. So I wonder if it's going to change because as we know, Braun Breaker is no longer the IC champion. It is now Jey Uso. That's the Yeet IC champion. So does this mean he will replace him with Jey Uso or does he still think this match is going to happen regardless without a title being involved? Now, personally for me, I would rather see Jay, I would rather see John Cena versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Or possibly, maybe they can run it back with uh, John Cena versus The Miz, since The Miz is a heel now. But I would more so want to see Randy Orton versus John Cena or something like that. But let's hear what he has to say. John Cena versus Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 41. Now, we know Braun Breaker, he recently did call out John Cena in a recent interview that he had. And he talked about that, you know... John Cena, you never become he became Intercontinental Champion, and I'm the one that's holding it. If you want this title, come get at me. Come say it to my face. Come take it from me. So he pretty much called them out, and I think at some point down the line, you could definitely run this going into WrestleMania because I think this would add more emphasis and give more importance and more prestige to the Intercontinental, not just because of Braun Breaker, but because John Cena is chasing that title, chasing the one title that he has never held in his illustrious WWE career. So I had to put that on there. So the next match, well, before I okay. uh, get into the next match, but like I said, then that match is definitely going to be good because you have Braun Breaker going for that spear. Like, this match between these two will be just two people just going at it. It would be a great match, and I feel like... I'm kind of scared, though, to see John Cena at this point in time in his career catching a spear from Braun Breaker. This man run 300 miles an hour. This guy, Braun Breaker is not a slow guy, and that spear looks devastating. Now, if Goldberg speared John Cena, I'm like, okay, that's safe. I'll be more worried about Goldberg getting hurt in a spear than John Cena, but with Braun Breaker, with all the impact hitting John Cena at this stage of his career... I mean, maybe John Cena can take it. And it would be cool to see a reversal to where the spear gets reversed into a F, not an F5, but an FU or an attitude adjustment for the PG era. That would be cool to see something like that. It will be something similar to what happened with the RKO and Seth Rollins attempting to do this curb stunt. But it won't be on the same level, but it will be something cool to see. But again, this will be cool to see. If But I want to see Randy versus John Cena. If that doesn't happen and Braun versus John Cena happens in just a regular exhibition match, like we had Austin Theory versus John Cena. I personally would not be mad about that. But with Braun Breaker, I would love to see him face Gunther at WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But anyways, let's keep going. The story that they can tell between Braun Breaker and John Cena would be great. And like I said, add more importance for the Intercontinental Championship. On to the next match for the United States Championship. We have a ladder match. Yes, a ladder match for the United oh, States Champion. Okay. We have LA Knight walking in as your United States Ricky Champion Starks. against Grayson Waller. Ricky Starks? Yo, if Ricky Starks come in, bro, I love Ricky Starks, bro. The way he was cooking people in AEW, he was cooking John Cena, he was cooking MJF, he was cooking so many people. I hope he's right about this. I hope he's right about this. Now, this match right here, this is the thing. This just shows how crazy the mid card is right now in WWE, specifically on SmackDown. You got Carmelo Hayes, KO, Andrade Cien uh, Grayson Waller for some people who like Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, my guy, and you got AJ Styles. This is a lot of talent in the ring at one time. So this match has no choice but to be a banger. So I wonder what's going to happen to make it turn into this type of match as far as a ladder match. That's going to be really interesting. Now, Ricky Starks and a LA Knight on the mic going back and forth, that's going to be crazy. That's going to be crazy. Carmelo Hayes, Kevin Owens, Austin Theory, Andrade, AJ Styles, and the debuting Ricky Starks. Now, this is a great match because you have the U.S. Championship on SmackDown. You want to get as many people as you want to on the card as much as possible. So, why not do it? Um, so, why not do it? You know what I mean? I think this match would be great to have between the two, these these guys, because I think all of them have different styles, and I think they can work together. Mm -hmm. Who going to win it? It was a great match. Who going to um, win it, Leo? Ricky Starks debuting would be a big deal because we, we do know at some point he's probably probably going to jump ship anyway but why not have him mm. debut on the biggest stage possible 
in a ladder match at WrestleMania for his first championship. That's That takes the ice on the cake for me. Win, lose, or draw, that is a big deal for Ricky Stark showing up on the biggest stage that WWE can honestly put on. So I definitely have to give that a shout out there. The only thing there is that it would be cool to see Ricky Stark's debut at Royal Rumble. But I feel like they want to give that U.S. title to... Um, they want to give the, the title to Carmelo Hayes. So if Carmelo Hayes get that title, I, w I wouldn't be mad at a back and forth between him and Ricky Starks. That's going to that would be very, very interesting in my personal opinion. So, um, yeah, I'm not mad at that match at all. I love ladder matches. And again, these guys are all talented involved. So the promos will be great. The match will be great. I'm not mad at that. On to the next match. We have for the WWE tag team titles. We have the Ooh. Usos of Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso versus the bloodline of Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa for the WWE tag team titles. I think this is bound to happen at some point. I feel like that's the... This is the match I've been waiting for for 10 years, guys. For over 10 years, I've been waiting for this to happen. I hope Leo is right. But how is Jay going to come over to SmackDown? And Jay is the current Intercontinental Champion. So how are they going to work that whole thing out? That's the question. why they put the tag team titles on them because I think they're probably going to go on the route of having them versus the Usos at some point, and I figured why not do it at WrestleMania. On to the next match that we're going to be talking about. For the WWE Women's Championship, we have Charlotte Flair versus Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Ooh. Stratton, she's pretty much on the run of her career right now, holding that Money in the Bank contract, which guarantees her a shot at the title. A I think she's going to cash in, and Charlotte is going to come back at some point in the near future. I think the time I'm recording this video, she is close to returning. So I think why not have this match be almost like a passing of the torch type of match. You have Charlotte um, put over um, Tiffany Stratton and make her an even bigger deal than she already is. So I definitely have to put that match on my predictions. for. That's a good idea, but I wonder if Charlotte Flair will be okay with taking another loss at a WrestleMania. That is my question. But overall, this match will be a banger. And this is why this kind of why I would be cool with them having another evolution because we got tons of talent when it comes to the women in WWE in general and We'll talk about that in a different video. WrestleMania 41. The next match is a celebrity versus celebrity match. We what? Have Logan Paul versus Bad Bunny. Two <laughs> of the biggest celebrities that have came okay. and crossed over to WWE and had some of the best matches since as a celebrity in the WWE, in my personal opinion. Facts. Logan Paul, even no matter what you say about him, he when he go when he gets in that ring, he is one of the best to do it. We also gotta agree, Bad Bunny for his first match, he impressed a lot of people. The match that he had mm -hmm. with Damian priest um last year at backlash yep. very impressive that was like one of my favorite matches of that year in my personal opinion talk your talk so leo I definitely think these two proven who's the better celebrity that's crossed over to wwe i think the story you know in, in the match itself itself honestly so yeah and, and you already got like logan paul he's a person who's great on social media whether you like him or not but as far as like trolling and conjuring up a lot of heat he can do that and what type of, you know, I don't know, pranks and stuff he can pull on Bad, Bad Bunny behind the scenes as far as drumming up that heel heat going into this match so the crowd can be behind Bad Bunny. I mean, we got to have some type of celebrity situation happen here, right? And I think this will be a perfect opportunity for that to happen. Even if it isn't really like some big build up to this point, let's just get this match in there. It's going to be a great match and both guys are really good in the ring. So I think this is a pretty good idea. My next prediction for WrestleMania 41, the next match, CM Punk versus yeah. Seth Rollins. CM That's got to happen. Even though he's included with this feud with Drew McIntyre, which is definitely amping up as we head into Bad Blood time we recording this video. But I do think the next big match or feud that he's going to have is going to be Seth Rollins. These two are going to have bad blood with each other. No pun intended to the pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks. Because <laughs> we were supposed but to get that anyway, these though. These two are going to literally try to murder each other. They're tr they're going to literally try to get one up each other week after week. The promos are going to be good. The mm -hmm. match, I feel like, is going to be good. I mm -hmm. think they will really have a brawling feud going into that pay-per-view that pay-per-view for WrestleMania 41. You can even add a stipulation if you want where the number one contenders for world title, we will see. But for sure, Seth Rollins for CM Punk at WrestleMania 41. We know 
when uh, these two are they kind of been separating these two to have their own paths as of right now we have Seth Rollins on injury right now selling the injuries from Bronson Reed well they they haven't really been separating them two but their body parts have been separating the two because they, they both got injured and then slow down this storyline by a lot but I get where you going coming from Leo we know when he when Seth Rollins come back he's gonna go after Bronson Reed and when he finishes that feud up then the 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 path is open for him and um CM Punk to cross paths once again in the near future. The next match is a Las Vegas street fight. We have Drew Ooh. McIntyre oh, versus Matt Cardona. I like this one. I like this one. My boy Matt Cardona versus Drew McIntyre in a Las Vegas street fight, bro. This will be so good. This will be so good. I'm just a big fan of street fights, and I, I follow Matt Cardona as far as his run in the independent scene. This guy is fantastic in Drew McIntyre. Can you imagine the back and forth on the mic between each other? Oh, my God. This is a good idea. I like this. I like this. Dona. Now, a lot of people are going to probably be looking at this video like, what do you mean? How is it? Are you setting this up? Okay, so I feel like... It don't Drew matter. Do McIntyre it. Is, <laughs> it's going to look like he's not going to have something to do. He's going to probably be in that Seth Rollins type of world where it doesn't look like his his path to WrestleMania 41 is clear. But I think they're going to set something up in the Royal Rumble since it is in February next year. You have Matt Cardona come back into the fold of things, coming back to WWE. He doesn't come back as Zack Ryder. He comes back as Matt yeah. Cardona and Matt wouldn't do it any other way that this iteration of him is probably the best that he's ever been he's in the best shape of Facts. his life his character work is, is is top tier we know it for a fact and the story could be we both left the company but he, but drew mcintyre is fed up with these people coming back and trying to take over his spot he's fed up with it he's attacking um matt cardona and and it gets brawled over to these for the point they are trying to hurt each other and take each other out of commission to the point adam pierce says enough is enough you two are going to finally settle this and it's going to be a las vegas street fight i think the story the promos that they can have with each other could yeah. be really good um especially with this new iteration of with raw going to netflix i think Having Matt Cardona come back in and having him in this type of era, I think he would flourish a lot better than he was under the Vince McMahon umbrella. So hopefully things, this is like his second chance to finally get to where he's been trying to be his entire life. And that's finally getting to that top uh, spot in the WWE. And this is the first step that he takes to achieving that. On to the next I'm match with it. I'm for with the it. World Heavyweight Championship. We have Gunther walking in as champion against a former friend of his. Not even a former friend. A, f a former enemy. A enemy at his finest. Gunther defending the world title against Ilya Dragunov. These two. Have See, I'm not mad at this match. But for me, because I already saw it at NXT UK, I'm hyped for it to happen again because I know it's going to be fantastic. But for people who haven't seen it first, they're a lot more excited about this match than I am, I guess, because they want to see it for the first time ever and want to see it live. And I completely understand where people are coming from. So this match happening, I'm not mad at it at all. Would I have liked it to be Gunther versus, um, versus Braun Breaker? For sure. But if this happens too, if I get a second dose of this, I'm not mad at this. Who, who mad at getting something good again, bro? That's just how I feel about that one. Have a lot of history going back to their NXT UK days and NXT as well. Their fact, I think the match that they had at NXT Takeover 36. If I'm coming up, let me know. I might be wrong, but NXT Takeover 36. That match was one of my favorite matches. Honestly, they really knocked it out of the park. And you had the visual where you, you had Ilya Dragunov make Gunther tap out there's nobody else that i can think of has made him be able to tap out in his career yes he has gotten pinned as of recently and that's going back to wrestlemania but now he's world champion i think this match sells itself the fact that that we a lot of us including myself thought this match were going to sorry guys i'm paying attention i was just trying to figure out what exact takeover it was i know for sure it's for the nxc uk title happened at um basher berlin this past week but unfortunately that was not the case we got gunther versus randy orton which was a great match nonetheless but i think they're gonna save this match between these two for a bigger and better stage and what bigger stage 
could it be than WrestleMania 41 next year? You can build this up. You can start planning teases if you want to in the lead up to that show. So I definitely think we are going to see that happen at some point in the near future. On to and and honestly, and I, I want to I should have uh put like a disclaimer in the video. This is not gonna be set up like night one and night two. This is all in just one um however you want to split it, you can do that. But I was just gonna this ask is that. all the matches. I'm not gonna really try to pick predict where matches gonna go where. I just have them all in one um type of scenario. Mm -hmm. But the next match we're talking about is the women's tag team titles. We have uh, Lyra Valkyria and Becky Lynch uh, going up against the Pure Fusion Collective versus Unholy that Union name is ridiculous. versus Kabuki Warriors for the tag titles. I okay, think that's possible. You have Pure Fusion Collective somehow, some way get their tag titles. Yeah, tag yep, titles I agree. Bianca I agree. They, they, they were. I think they're destined to get those tag team titles. I personally thought they were going to take it off of Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Maybe this can happen, but I know I feel like at some point, regardless of how they're booking Shayna Baszler right now and the it made me sick even thinking about their name. The pure, the, the pure Fusion Collective. You know, regardless of how they have them set up now, they're going to get those women tag team championships at po some point, and it's going to be some point soon. So, you know, maybe it'll be at WrestleMania. Maybe it'll be at the Royal Rumble. But it's going to happen sometime soon. Date at some point in the near future. Because I think whoever does take those titles from Bianca and, and, um, and Jade are going to be heels anyway. So why not do Pure Fusion Collective since they've been trying to build them up as of recently so mm -hmm. i have them going as tag team champions you have liar valkyria and becky their best friends were as of right now in story so why not run with it and have those two go up for the tag titles um nothing else to be explained with unholy union and uh kabuki warriors nothing else needs to be explained but those are the people that i'm going to pick to be part of this women's tag team title match on to the next match that i'm predicting and this is a wild card if you will but i think it's a it's gonna happen at some point and what better way to do this than wrestlemania we have the introduction of the women's intercontinental championship and oh will that be thing is gorgeous and crowned in a battle royal at wrestlemania i know people are probably gonna be like oh why are you gonna do a battle royal why you can't do a tournament not everything needs to be a tournament you guys i mean go back to what we used to have i mean look what happened with the world title back in, in like 2007 2006 something like that where greg carly when he won in a, in a battle royal like we've seen the title be won numerous times in a battle royal and you know we haven't really had a i get what he's saying i get where he's coming from and that match should be really good but i love me some battle i love me some tournaments bro I love me some tournaments. I don't care if we're talking about wrestling, anime, Yu Hakusho with the Dark Tournament, Dragon Ball Super with the Tournament of Power, the original Dragon Ball with their tournament, the Cell Games, whatever you want to talk about. I love tournaments, bro. So I hope this is a tournament. But if it is a battle royal, and I know we're talking hypothetically, and I know we're talking about his predictions, but if this were to be the case, I would like for it to be a tournament. But at the same time, if it's a battle royal, cool. I ain't mad at that. Let the ladies cook. As long as they get that mid card title, I've been put, I've been asking and begging for for the past five plus years. Then I'm happy, bro. I'm happy. Don't y'all want to see me happy? Let's move on. A women's battle royal on WrestleMania. I know we did for like maybe two, three years, and then that was it. But we've been having the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So this could be the equivalent to that for the women and having them crown their first ever mid-card champion. Because I think we are bound to get a women's mid-card title for the main roster at some point in the future. Please, anyway, the but I love. The waters of it with NXT having the NXT North American title. So why not give the women on the main roster a women's mid-card title to fight for? This will help elevate a lot of women that aren't really getting a lot of shine, a lot of opportunities to do much of anything right now. So this will be definitely beneficial to the whole roster as a whole. So why not do it at WrestleMania? Or they could, they could run a gauntlet and whoever wins the gauntlet, well, then that won't even make any sense because if you have a gauntlet, you need somebody you need to face. So, tournament battle royal number two. That's just how I feel about it. On to the this next match that we're going to be talking about. We're going to have the Wyatt Six versus the Final Testament. Ooh, I feel like just having this would be a good a match one. At Yo, just the promos. From Karen Cross and Uncle Howdy, that will be fantastic, bro. 
just off the promos alone. I don't even care about the match. I'm not even focused on AOP. I'm not focused on Scarlett Bordeaux. I'm not focused on um 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 Nikki Cross. I'm not even focused on Eric Rowan or I'm not focused on anybody. Okay, this the promos. Imagine, just just imagine Karen Cross sitting in a chair across from Uncle Howdy in those segments backstage that they had with Uncle Howdy and them two playing mind games with each other verbally because they're on the two opposite spectrums of what they like. Karen Cross likes to create chaos. Uncle Howdy and the YS6 don't like the type of people that are a result of, of Karen Cross coming across them. And that is going to be an interesting dynamic and it finally gives something the final testament to do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we need that. We need that. Mania, and you're, you've been trying to do something with Karrion Cross anyway, and I think there were reports that they were going to try to do Karrion Cross versus Bray Wyatt, RIP to Bray Wyatt. They were going to try to do something oh, yeah, with I those heard about two that. in a match. So why not kind of do something here, kind of blur the lines a little bit, and and everything like that. And I feel like you know the feud could probably be interesting. In all honesty, I think the feud could be something if given the time to. Um, to pick up steam and stuff like that so why not um to the next match we have for the world tag team championships um no the WWE tag team no, you know the world tag team championships i'm sorry i kind of get those the tag titles confused and anyway we have american made defending the titles against lwo versus uh new day I think they're going to set up a mix, like a multi-man mm, at some point. Well, the New Day is not going to be in that anymore. I mean, we see what's happening with Xavier Woods, man. He got that look in his eye. He turned it into show enough from the from the last dragon. But um, it'd be cool if, well, they can't do that. If at that point, if the Lucha Bros get involved as opposed to the New Day, I think that would be great to replace them with them two. Um, but, you know, either way, it could still be a great match in my personal opinion this year and we'll probably have the judgment they lose um and then you can give it to american make because i think they're trying to push them as something big but i know it knew that dave tease on the recent episode of raw of possibly going after the um the tag team title since the uh, judgment haven't defended in over two months so why not you know actually go all in and have uh, those titles be defended at wrestlemania the next match that we're going to be talking about is for the women's world championship we have rhea ripley going in as champion against Liv morgan i whoa. think they're going to try to drag this out until wrestlemania whoa okay i believe that this match is going to happen i'm with you leo on that. i'm with you on the fact and i know this is recorded before bad blood i, I completely understand that so this is not me being overly critical given the fact that the time of when this was recorded but i personally don't want to see rhea ripley going to this as champion i don't i'm not even sure if i want to even see her leave this match as champion right i mean it would make sense for her to get her comeuppance but at the same time it's like unless somebody get called up from nxt or some new free agent woman gets moved into the main roster if delta gets sent up or roxanne perez gets sent up then fine that's great because if rhea ripley gets that title there isn't anyone there that she isn't just gonna steamroll over she's gonna be washing people left and right like she like she worked <laughs> in the in the restaurant in the back when they washed the dishes like she's gonna be destroying everybody left and right so who is going to be even a formidable threat to her now, again, the only people I can think of is if they move people up to the main roster. And I know that would be too fast for Delta because she, as of right now, she hasn't even debuted in the ring yet. So, but they could kind of do a quick one for that. Or even if they want to move Roxanne Perez up. Now, Roxanne Perez, she, ever since she's turned heel, she's able to deal, uh, you know, take a lot of damage in the ring. We see what she did with Jordan Grace. So why can't she go toe to toe with Rhea Ripley? Because she's one of them people who just keep going and going and going. So, I mean, that feud would be very interesting. But if Roxanne Perez is going to lose that, if they do book, book that, I don't think that would be great for her. So it'll be interesting how, to make this interesting. And most people who are, you know, watching this stuff, they probably don't want to see a title bouncing back and forth between Liv and Rhea. Even right now, people are already kind of burnt out on the New Judgment Day story, specifically on a story between Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan and the whole Dominic Mysterio thing. So I wonder, I don't know how, even with the inclusion of Raquel Rodriguez, I don't know how they're going to make this interesting enough to stretch all the way out to WrestleMania from this day. If they can do it, if they can do it, 
they got a magic genie back there somewhere because it just seems very impossible. But we'll see. We'll see what they're going to do. Yeah, I really do. I really feel like if you look at the current landscape right now on Raw, I feel like those are really your top players right now. Um, I know you can have a Royal Rumble winner um, come in and actually go over to Raw and challenge for the title. Um, but I think yeah. if you look at it, I think a lot of the matches already kind of been made in advance. Um, we can always kind of see them kind of be doing Charlotte versus Tiffany. We can see, and, and the reason why I didn't mention Bailey, because Bailey will be part of the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal. Um, and then the women's tag team title, you have Becky Lynch there. So those are kind of like your top players right there. And then you have Bianca and Jay occupied as well. So out of, out of, outside of that, you really just have Liv Morgan, unless you want to bring Alexa Bliss back in, but I don't think they're going to do that. And yeah, I kind of wouldn't want to see that. Do this. I do think they're going to set things up for. She's probably going to have. They're going to have their match at Bad Blood, of course. And Liv Morgan is going to retain. And then on the uh, per first episode of Raw on Netflix, I can see them giving Rhea Ripley that big um, pop and having her win the title on that episode because I think that would be a big deal for her. And then you can kind of start teasing them going separate but live more or maybe they do like sometimes sometimes they do with a lot of these wrestlers Superstar take some time off and come back in the Royal Rumble and I think this would be a great oh. way to finally have her win the Royal Rumble since she has came up second in the last two you have a way to finally culminate that story and I finally give her a win at WrestleMania and you can actually have these two have a stipulation if you don't do a stipulation at Bad Blood that's how I see it happening. So you have Rhea Ripley win the title back. Liv Morgan wins the Royal Rumble. She goes on to WrestleMania and finally has a big marquee match at WrestleMania since she's never really had like a big match at WrestleMania one on one. And you have these, you have an actual history that makes a lot of sense to be dragged out to WrestleMania. And then that's, and then you can have, only have Liv Morgan have her big moment at WrestleMania itself. So that's one of the matches. That's the other side of the women's matches. Now we're on to the world title. Well, we already kind of talked about the rest of the matches. Uh, we have two more to go over. The oh. next match for the WWE Championship, we have Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton. I think if you're looking at Cody yeah, Rhodes, yeah, I mean that makes right sense. Now, yeah, because we that. Randy Orton is going to face Cody at some point. So if we don't get, we don't get John Cena versus Randy Orton, then for sure, I, I know we all agree that Randy has to be the one to take the title off of Cody Rhodes. It just makes all the sense in the world. He's the only one that really seems like a threat outside of possibly The Rock, but I don't think they'll give him the title. And if they do, it's not going to be for long. So, you know, this, this match right here has to happen. Okay. And you're looking at who faces him at WrestleMania. I know people are going to say The Rock. I do not, I didn't, I wouldn't be mad at The Rock if he faced Cody, but my thing is this, he does not need to face Cody Rhodes for the championship, you can, at WrestleMania, you can have him face Cody, since he did pin him at WrestleMania 40 this year on night one, so there is that Leroy right there where he's gonna say I did pin you and he did say the night after Wrestlemania night 2 he says your story with Roman is done but our story is just beginning so you're already teasing that they are going they're going to face at some point in the near future why not just do this at a Saudi show because you know Saudi want the big stars there. You can do this at the Royal Rumble. You do not need to do this at WrestleMania. If you want, who do I think should be facing him is Randy Orton. The story makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. The story that teases that they're going to be doing where he finally turns on Cody and facing him for that championship is going to be a big moment. The story between the two, going back to their days and the legacy, where it was like student versus teacher. They were literally, this is the match that we need right now. The yeah, I remember when uh, Randy Orton slapped Cody Rhodes in front of his dad, RIP to Dusty. That was disrespectful. That No, actually, no, I'm sorry. He slapped Dusty in front of Cody Rhodes. That was really disrespectful. Dang, man. That was a crazy moment. RIP to Dusty. This is probably one of the biggest matches you can put on for Cody. Not to say that that Rock would be a bad match. It by any means it's not but you could do that somewhere else cody versus 
Randy Orton is the match they need to book for WrestleMania 41. And on to the final match that we are going to be talking about. It is Tribal Combat. Winner becomes the true Tribal The Rock chief. versus Roman Reigns. We have Rock versus Roman yeah. Reigns. Mm -hmm. Roman and Rock is part of the biggest match you can put on on a WrestleMania period. It's the biggest match you can put on WrestleMania period. Like, mm -hmm. do you not see the numbers that they were generating in the lead up to WrestleMania 40? Yeah. They were generating box office huge numbers. They're both ratings draws. Mm -hmm. Literally. They're literally some of the biggest draws in wrestling. People are going to watch because of them. If you're talking about the new generation versus the old generation, this is the dream match that you book right here. And because it also has family ties, too, mm -hmm. that makes it even more intriguing. And if you look at the, the, the direction they're taking with Roman right now, you can have now that he's a baby face, you have a situation where it's at some point where it looks like he's about to get his vengeance. And we find out that The Rock is the one been the mastermind behind this whole thing he's been orchestrating this entire thing against roman and that makes roman an even bigger baby face and a bigger star than he already is now he's gonna be on a whole new level after this and now you have them you know roman has been calling himself the tribal chief for years but if the rock comes in and says you're not the tribal chief i am and and i had solo be doing all the bidding for me and it proves that you are not the tribal chief, that you can't handle the responsibility. That's why I need to come back in and take my place at the head of the table back because you can't handle it. That story is going to going to feed families. I'm sorry. That match is going to cook. The promo yeah, it's going to feed the to Samoan cook. family. The interactions <laughs> that they're going to have is going to cook. The match is going to, is going to be cooked as well. And like I said, family ties well. What? What family members is going to align with Rock and what family members are going to align with Roman? That's how you book. You can do that. But those are the matches that I'm predicting for WrestleMania 41. Comment down below your predictions for matches that you think are going to happen at WrestleMania 41 next year. I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. We're on the road to 300 subscribers, but the ultimate goal is 10K. Like I said, every video, I will do a giveaway with one of my do hit 10K. Well, one of my lucky subscribers will have the opportunity to win a WWE Championship from WWE Shop. So if you want to be a part of that and want to be that potential lucky subscriber to win it go subscribe to the channel it's absolutely free you can always change your mind in the future but why would you want to do that i'm trying to give you guys daily wrestling content the grind doesn't stop super kick that like button so never time post super kick that like button because it helps my channel get pushed across the platform so more people can see what i'm doing here on youtube superman punch that post notification bells so and every time i post a new video where it's a reaction video rant video live stream any type of video you can be in a loop of things when i do drop a video and spear that subscribe button it takes three seconds out of your day to do those three things for me helps out in the progression of my channel so i appreciate every single one of you guys hope everybody has a great day a great week and i'll see you guys in the next video yeah, good video, Leo. Good video. I like it. You put a lot of effort and time into the booking decision for each match. And I'm all for it. I'm for a whole lot of it. And if those things happen, I personally wouldn't be mad. And Triple H, a slow cooker booker, will find a way to make all of these things make sense within the story. So what do you guys think? Be sure to go to his channel. Hit the subscribe button. Do all the wrestling moves he said to do to the like button and the subscribe button. Get this man up to 500 subscribers. Remember, he lost his channel before and he's starting from the ground up. And the fact that he's gotten back on the grind and didn't let that fall, make him fall back. And there's other obstacles in life he's faced. And he's still creating content. Still doing his thing. That's enough inspiration for me. So do me a favor. Let's help this guy out. Let's go to his channel. Let's hit the subscribe button. Let's let him know what your WrestleMania 41 um, early predictions are in his comment section, okay? But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Salute. Peace. Have a great day.